Hi, everybody. We're here for another exciting session in our Wikitree Symposium. <clears throat> I am very excited to be here with Emma Macbeth, who is a project leader for our Adoption Angels Project on Wikitree, which she is going to tell you all about in a minute here. And Sherry Passy, who you guys know from Gen Friends, and just she's, I, every time I go on Facebook, she's there doing something else with genealogy. So she's <laughs> all over the place there. And a fun fact, I was telling Emma that I've known Sherry since I was 13. We go way back. Yes. Yes. Way back. <laughs> <laughs> and we're like, is that you? Is that you? Yes. <laughs> it was only like, I don't know, 10 years ago. Yeah. Yeah. I was 13, so. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> but that's okay. Yeah. So very happy to be here with them. We are going to talk about adoption angels and adoption, and hopefully a few folks from relative race are going to pop in. But if they don't, that's okay, because maybe I'll just talk about relative race. So, <laughs> You're going to have fun no matter what. Yeah, <laughs> we have some people. We sent them the link, so we don't know if they're having trouble getting in or what's going on, but they, they were planning on being here. So we'll just I, see um, what happens. I, so a lot of nights I can't sleep, and I'll be awake from like 2 to 4 in the morning. And so Relative Race is like my comfort show. So that's what I will watch and kind of doze off and on. So I've probably seen the last five seasons, like, I I mean, more times than I would care to probably admit out loud on tele, on camera. So maybe I'll just tell their stories for them. That would be, that would be great, too. I feel like, I, I feel like um, you, know, the, you know, especially the, the ones that are going to be here, I, yeah, I, I know their stories. So, yeah. but we will start with the Adoption Angels Project, which we started. Well, it's been several years now. Since 2015 is when it officially started. Seven years. Wow, yeah. I know, right? And it it was a thing, and then Emma took the lead on it, and it's been getting more and more awesome ever since. It's it's a really great project. Um, it's one of my favorite things that we that we have on WikiTree. So I'm going to not jabber and I will let Emma <laughs> talk for a bit about, about that. It has evolved a lot um, since 2015 because when it first started, it was all about adoption, adoptees, helping adoptees um, who have, might have paperwork, a paper trail to follow. But because DNA came onto the scene um, over the past few years and what we can do with DNA now is so extraordinary we don't have to have a paper trail anymore. And so now we don't just help adoptees, we help anyone <clears throat> who's looking for their birth parents. So even though our name's Adoption Angels, we are search angels who help uh, anyone up to the grandparent level who's looking for uh, a birth parent. As a matter of fact, we recently changed it to where we now require that you take a DNA test because what we find more and more often is paperwork is not always accurate. And mm -hmm. the name that's on there is not necessarily the right name and DNA can point us to the right name and make sure that we're being accurate. Um, so it's easy to get help from the adoption angels. All you have to do is fill out the application if you're a member of Wikitree and that's um, under the help tab up in the, I'm, I'm pointing as if this is my screen. <laughs> it's up there in the help tab uh, in the menu of the Wikitree screen and it just says adoption angels. So you just click on that fill out the application, which will come to our special group. It's private. No one else will see it except the adoption angels. We'll look at that application, see what needs you have. And then I want to give a shout out to Pam Anderson, who's Pam Anderson Smith, who's in the uh, watching us right now in the chat. She's um, our project coordinator for the project, and she heads up the mentorship section of um, the project. So when you send in an application, I'll send you an initial message that says, hi, we got your application. And then Pam will reach out to you and go through the checklist of have you done these things first before one of our, um, what we call family finder angels works one-on-one -on -one with you to find your birth parents. And so what are those things? DNA, of course. And um, I saw you were talking about DNA adoption a little while ago with mm -hmm. um, Mags and Rob and all of them. And Mags talked about uploading your DNA to all the places you can to, to get as many DNA matches as you possibly can. And so that's one of the things we help you do um, just to make it easy. Anything we can do to make the search easier is what we want to help you do. So 
Pam will take you through that checklist. And then once that's done, you go on the waiting list, which right now is so short because we have so many angels helping us that you will get help pretty quickly now. Um, our wait time has gone down to almost nothing. I'm so excited That's about that. Fantastic. <laughs> dance in my seat. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> about how much progress we've made because that wait list used to be enormous and we just couldn't keep up. And now we almost don't have enough cases to uh, for our angels to work. Not, not that I need everyone to go out and apply all at once. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to have a lot tomorrow. <laughs> I know that's what's going to happen, right? <laughs> So we have angels waiting right now. They're, they they don't have any um, cases that they're working on, so they're standing by, and we'll be happy to help. Um, one of the things we were chatting about before we came live is, you know, what do you expect from the search? We can give you the names, but we cannot create a certain outcome of what, you know, what's going to happen from there. It always, you know, it varies from family to family. It varies from you know, what the family story is, what the situation is, uh, but we can help walk you through how to make connections with the birth family once we have the names identified. Um, we can help people with that process and um, as much as possible. I mean, we can't, we don't do it for you, um, We, but we can walk you through the steps. On, on how to do that and talk about possible outcomes. And then, you know, if things are difficult, we can give you some suggestions on how to work through that. I think that's everything. Oh, how to join the project. Oh my goodness, we always need more angels. We're always happy for more angels. So if you have DNA experience, um, using DNA to find birth families, you know, whether it's birth parents or finding birth family somewhere else in the tree. It's all kind of the same thing, uh, the same kind of work. Um, all you have to do is um, if you go to our uh, adoption angels page, it'll give you the link to the post where you can sign up and say, I want to be an adoption angel and I'll send you a message and get you started. And I'll be so excited to have more people. And we need people from all over the world because um, as DNA is expanding across the world, we're getting more and more um, requests from people in, you know, all sorts of countries across the world. So we need angels who can help, who have experience with the research in those countries. It helps. I mean, those of us who know DNA can handle some of those countries, but it's really helpful if we have people who are more experienced with that kind of genealogy. That makes sense. So yeah, we need lots of people all over the world. I think that's it. Anything else? No, we're done. Yeah. See you later, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to my great angels who do amazing work and volunteer their time. To no, they really do. It's it's impressive what they do, and um, I'm glad that we have that. I'm glad we can do that because it's an important thing. And I pretend yeah. I'm like on Charlie's Angels, and when I talk to them, I always say, hello, angels. <laughs> <laughs> That's cute. <laughs> yeah, we were, um, so I was sharing earlier, like, I'm, I'm adopted, and I'm also a birth mother. So adoption, obviously, you know, has a pretty significant, you know, place in my heart. And so relative race, the show we were talking about for this session, um, if you're not familiar with it, it's basically there's usually four partnerships, like spouses or friends, or this season they have two, two pairs of strangers who are going on this crazy adventure together. Um, and so it's over a 10-day period, and basically they're competing in a race. So they have to do challenges and they have to do selfies or this season they have to take a photo of different things mm -hmm. and they are timed. They have a specific time to get to the next relative the next day. Um, and so they have this whole race factor going on, but what they're doing at the end of each day is they get to meet a new family member. Um, and it's everything from fourth cousins to parents. I mean, they, you know, they get the whole, the whole spectrum and, um, so it's, and it's all based on their DNA. They, they, yeah. they take a DNA test and, and then the, the, the genealogist and the, the, the team that works 
poor relative race um, goes out and, and finds family and, uh, you know, they, they make sure that this is going to be an okay situation, which is, I think, why we like relative race so much is because you don't feel like, um, you, you don't feel like they're being ambushed in any way, shape or form because they know what they're, they're getting into kind of sort of, they don't know who they're going to find, but the relatives on the other end have agreed to these meetings. And so you're not going to, they're excited for them to be there. So you're not going to find that, oh my gosh, kind of, you know, a deer in the headlights yeah. kind of, kind of thing. And, and there are some that say, we don't want to meet on the show. We want to meet you, but, but not soon, on camera. But as soon as the show's over, you know, when we're not on camera, we, we want to meet. And, and that's just as healing, I think, just to know that they do want to meet them. So. Oh yeah. Cause you know, I think with a lot of, um, adoptees are people who don't know their biological family right it's, it's all about rejection and abandonment yeah, and exactly. they you know and so when you're going to go on a show or whatever like to have that same fear and so not knowing you know how are they can they accept me or will they accept me or yeah. you know that's that's the scary part of all of it is Exactly. And I do know from talking to some of the producers and, and Dan himself, um, and shout out to Dan. I hope he's feeling better. For those of you that don't know, uh, Dan Debenham is ill um, with cancer and uh, our thoughts and prayers and our, our little blue ribbons <laughs> are for him. So we, we really, Gen Friends, have dedicated this whole season to him and we are praying for him to feel better. So we're hoping that if he sees this, he knows that we love him and we're hoping that he feels better. So everybody out there in uh, Wiki Tree land, say an extra prayer tonight for Dan that he uh, that he can uh, overcome this illness and get back to season 11. Because <laughs> we're on right. season, we're on season we're 10. We're with 10, we need 11. I know, we're, we're almost in with season 10, but they're very aware and when they um have people come and they've either reached out to people to be on the show or people will apply to be on the show they're very careful as they go through these stories if they see anything that they feel is going to be harmful in any way or is just not going to going to work i mean this is on byu tv as well and so they want it to be very family friendly and very uplifting and so they will say uh we can't do this on camera, you know. This this yeah. is not this is not a good situation. We we won't pursue this one any further. But um, so that's why you know when you're going into it, it's going to be some, it's going to be a lot of tears. You know, if you've not Always. watched it before, you have Always. to have a box of Kleenex. You yes. have to have a box of Kleenex. I almost start from the minute the show comes oh, on. I know. The song starts. I'm like, oh, who are they going to be today? You know. So. Well, it is you know, they, they make a safe space for them. Yes. Um, but it isn't always good news. There's several where they find out one of their biological parents has already passed away. Right. And they, you know, they kind of have to work through that. Exactly. Um, you know, Pam, that was going to be on tonight, you know, we're, we're going to have to get off this and go, where were you guys? Pam was <laughs> <gonna be> here. <laughs> yeah, yeah she, she, she found out day one of her, at this, or of her season that, you know, her mom had passed away just a few years before. Oh, they just missed each other. Yeah, and yeah. she was part of the twin sisters that went on this race trying to find their biological parents. Um, and just just to be clear for people that are out there, you know, watching, I am, as, as you know, I'm an adoptive parent too. I've got biological and, and adoptive children. Relative race is not trying to say that adoptive relationship they're not trying to demean it in any way, shape, or form and say this biological is more important. They're very, especially in the last few seasons, they have been very, very good at sometimes bringing in those adoptive parents mm -hmm. and saying, yeah. we we were so, well, the parents, you know, we were so excited. We want yeah. them to find their biological family. And so, and and they'll talk to the, the teams and they'll say, this is not about, you know, not loving my my family that I grew up in. This is about just closure and answers to questions. So um, I know sometimes people get a little worried about that, you know, uh, well, is it, I mean, the, the adoptive, no, not anything. Yeah. They're praising them for raising these wonderful, you know, people that want to go out and, and make those connections and add to their family. 
Yeah, and every, you know, for every adoptee, for every birth parent, for every adoptive parent, it's, there's so many ways that you can feel about it. Yeah. And there's, you know, that whole range of emotions. And it's okay. Like, it, whatever you feel about it, that's how you feel about mm -hmm. it. Um, gotcha. But it, it is possible to have both without, yeah. you know, exactly demeaning the other. And yeah. I love when they say, you know, when they're like, oh, my gosh, I saw someone who looked like me. Yeah, I, I still relate to that because my mom, she's about five foot four and she has <laughs> red hair and freckles. <laughs> so, yep. you know, I mean, obviously, yep. you know, I'm 5'11 and I have no freckles and we don't look anything like. And yeah. it's it's not about replacing, it's just, right. like, you know, it's like, well, who do yeah. I look like? And so yeah. when I met some of my birth family and saw them for the first time, it was like, yeah, I'm sure. that's what I look like, you know, and just some yeah. of the mannerisms and. Yeah. And things like that and just you know I, I i like when they say you have to know where you came from to know where you're going absolutely and so much of it is just about like who who am i you know and people would always ask me mm -hmm. you know what race i was or what tribe i belong to or yeah. and i didn't know because yeah. you know the adoption agency told my parents that i was white <laughs> and <laughs> My biological father is Puerto Rican and uh, Spanish and Portuguese and, you know. Yeah. So it was cool to find out that kind of yeah. stuff, you know. And yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. And then we were supposed to have Stephen and his wife, um, Susan, come on. And they they were and and I'm I'm really I don't know what happened with them so I apologize to the people that came on tonight and wanted to see uh, some of these um, former team members because we wanted to ask them you know what's going on now and but let me tell, let me tell you something if you're a fan of relative race and you're on Facebook there is a fan of relative race page and there is a relative race live page get on those pages because a lot of the teams are on there and they answer questions and um, you can ask them those questions. What was really funny, what I loved about this couple was when we were doing Gen Friends, we always cover the season and we would ask a question and he would watch and he would answer us. It was so funny in the comments. He would say, yeah, we just love that because he would he would answer us. Some some of the, the team members are more um, responsive to, to our yeah. videos than others. And so when we finally got him on the show, we were like, thank you so much for, because we felt like we had this dialogue with him every That's week. Cause so he'd fun. say, he'd say, no, 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 this past, um, this season that's going on now, one of the, sometimes it's hard to keep up with all the storylines because they, they start, cause you're watching it so fast. And even if you watch it more than once, you start things kind of blend together with the teams. And one of the panelists said is Steve, who's on there now, is is he married and i said I, i'm pretty sure because he's on there with his daughter but i think so and he he watched that and he goes it's to his wife he actually says this to his wife it, it's like they didn't even watch day one <laughs> we were like we're so sorry you know you just get so caught up in who they're meeting that you kind of you know forget, forget their stories forget their stories and we don't mean to but we just get so caught up but we just fall in love with each of these teams and their stories and their purpose and um but yeah if you haven't watched it you can go on to byutv.org uh, and everything's on there except for season one i don't know if they're yeah, on. did they put yeah they just don't have season one on there and season one was it was um i would say it was bad they just didn't have their stuff together yet. And yeah, it, they're figuring it out. They're figuring it out. And and now, you know, it's just, you know, they, they do tweak it a little bit. But anyway, so they were supposed to be on. Stephen was is the one that was adopted and his wife was uh, there for him, um, supporting yeah. him. And he found out some amazing things. And I didn't know if you wanted to talk about their story or. Sure, I could tell Steve's story. Sure. <laughs> Steve, if you're watching. Uh, <laughs> we so missed you. Why are you here? <laughs> he um he was adopted when he was like two yeah. um and so he had this picture of his mom and he knew he had an older sister and yeah. then him and so he was another one who found out on day one that his mother had passed away yeah. um almost in the same city that they were living in yeah. Yeah. Like yeah. yeah 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 but he um he had a lot of heartfelt reunions he was able to meet his sister 
on his mother's side. He had like four or five siblings, I think, on his dad's side. Yeah. And then the last day they met family, he got to meet his dad. Yeah. It was so great. It, it was, was so great. great. So, so great. And that's why I said you got to get the Kleenex because you're just, you're just going to cry. Mm -hmm. And then Monica, um, Monica had let me know just before um, she was season green team uh, season seven. She lives down Hilton head. Um, she has a boat and she sent me a note saying we got stuck having to tow somebody in. <laughs> I don't know if I'm going to make it. So I know why she's not here. Um, she had an amazing story. She, her best friend went with her on the journey. And so that was amazing. It's always amazing to watch um, if, if it's not, a couple or if it's, I mean, if it's not somebody where they're both meeting a relative, it's mm -hmm. always interesting to watch that other person and their reaction to their friend, you know, meet uh, somebody from their family. And so um, hers was amazing. They even, they even got to go to her foster mom's home and she got to see the little bassinet that she was in, in that foster home. And also her mother had been in that foster home. Yeah. So, yeah, that was that was an amazing, an amazing story, too. And and um, since she just lives in Hilton Head, I was able to go down and uh, and and meet with her, which was really fun because I had to, I had to go down for something else. And, and she says, if you ever come down to Hilton Head, call me, let me know. And I thought she was just, eh, you know, you know, how people do that. She met me there with the scrapbook that she got on the show that they had put together for her. And we went through the scrapbook. Oh, we called and FaceTime Megan, her, her friend, and talked to her for a while. And she gave me one of the race cards that they get, you know, when they, they get to their, um, their challenge. And at, on the back, it's got the address. She gave me one of those cards. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I forgot that, so it was really fun. So I'm really sad that she wasn't able to, she's still towing somebody in probably, <laughs> but anyway. That's cool. So she had a great, great mm -hmm. story. Um, and you had mentioned that this season 10, they actually have two teams that met each other two, what, a week? Like a week? two weeks maybe before they went on this crazy they, they don't even know each other. <laughs> and they're driving in these cars together. And I thought, ooh. And I was having all these emotional, you know. <laughs> I know. I know. But they're I think that I think the fan theory is that. You're, they're going to find out that they're related to each other. That's the fan theory. I don't know that that's going to happen, but would that be awesome? I could see it with Team Red, maybe. Oh, I could see it with Team Red, too. And they are so, they're going to be bonded, you know? Yeah. And, unless something happens that we don't know about, they are so supportive of each other, and they just cry when the other one is meeting, like, you know, well, if you haven't seen it, you're going to spoil it alert. <laughs> what if it means? <laughs> what if him, he meets his, his grandmother and then his mother? He, he was uh, put into foster care. That's an interesting story, too. It's different than they've done before because mm -hmm. he's meeting people that he, he remembers from when yeah. he was a child because he was six when he was taken out, uh, when Jamie was taken out of um, taken out of the home and, and put into foster care. So yeah. he's learning that story and he's finding closure, which is wonderful and then alex his his friend now who's on the journey with him is, is he wants to know more about he was adopted and he wants to find out more about his biological family so when they meet they just cry for each other it's just the sweetest thing and then the other team that's doing the same thing they're they're the same and what's really funny is that one is an african-american and, and 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 one is caucasian but they still go up to people and say who are you related to because <laughs> They've had an experience where um, Mark, who's the Caucasian guy, his relative was part African American and, and took Curtis, the African American book. I was like, what? <laughs> so they've learned they have to ask. Like, you can never assume. You know, yeah. you can't assume with DNA. We're all part of the big happy family. So, and then the other story. So I'm trying to get people to watch season 10. Um, Start at the beginning. We're only on day seven. So this. Sunday will be day eight. They've got a team, guys. A father and son team. <laughs> the father was raised by his grandparents. His mother died in a car crash. Never told anybody who the father was. Okay. So he's on this journey to learn who his father is in a small town in Arkansas. Everybody in town's related to him and he didn't even know it. <laughs> He keeps finding, he'll go, you are my third grade teacher, you're my cousin, or you're my, you know, my, 
whatever it may be, my he's met brothers, he's met, you know, they're all people. What an interesting um, life story is to know that you were raised, you know, around family that you didn't, around, know family. You didn't even know about. So that's another very interesting story that they've got going on this season. So um, a lot of fun stuff, a lot of fun stuff. And of course you got the challenges and you know, on, I don't know if you guys ever watched Jen Friends, but we are rooting for a relative race family reunion game book <laughs> and take some of those challenges and put them in this. And we're trying really hard. So anybody you're watching from relative race, you know, that we keep talking to you guys about putting this book together. So um, wouldn't that be fun to yeah. have, have, cause they do some fun things like last they have week. the wackiest challenges. They have the wackiest challenges last week. They were throwing plastic Easter eggs with real eggs in them, but they had to pat them with the weirdest, broccoli, marble, <laughs> all sorts of stuff. But they had to get at least three eggs back and forth without breaking them before they could move on. Just some really fun, really fun and some disgusting, you know, kind of stuff that they have to do. So a fun. Yeah. Fun. <clears throat> no, it's good. And I like um, one of the ones I liked was the season with, uh, I'm blinking on her name, but she was really apprehensive about meeting her birth father and they you know, they connected but afterwards she was like I'm okay you know and I liked that they showed um you know they've had a few where it's not always gonna be perfect. Right. You know right. it's not exactly. always gonna it's not always gonna be this fairy tale yes you know connection. And we were talking earlier when we did the DNA and adoption one earlier, you know, one story that was shared, the siblings all get together and his, you know, the adoptive and biological siblings are all friends. And yes. um, the other story that was shared is, you know, I, well, you know, I see them on Facebook and, yeah. and I kind of watch what they're doing from there. And I probably fall yeah. somewhere in the middle of that. Like, you know, I've met a lot of my biological mother's family and I, it's, you know, we kind of have a Facebook relationship, I guess, yeah. <laughs> where that's, that's where I kind of keep up with a lot of what yeah. they're doing. Um, and my birth father is on New Mexico's most wanted list. So, <laughs> I, you know, I have his mug shot. That's the only photo. I have. <laughs> That's such a great example, Eowyn, of how there's such a wide spectrum yes. of what where your journey might end. Exactly. Yeah. You, you, just, you have to be prepared for either end of the spectrum. Mm -hmm. It's an yes. emotional journey, regardless. I am. Um, I so. I it was a fluke that I found my birth parents' names. I I really wasn't looking. Um, and I, um, you know, cause I, I was telling earlier, I worked in this bookstore. There were two books on adoption. They were very technical and it annoyed me because adoption is anything but technical. So I was <laughs> like, you know what? I'm just going to write a book about adoption, which I didn't, I did not write a book about adoption. <laughs> but I was on some random adoption site and this thing popped up and it said, click here to see if anyone's looking for you. And I was like, whatever, but I filled it out anyway. And my birth mother had registered four years earlier. And so all of a sudden I have her name and she had put my biological father's name and like her siblings names. And wow. I, you know, I always been kind of curious, but I never really like tried or pursued looking. And then mm -hmm. all of a sudden it's like literally, it literally fell into my lap. Were you prepared? Yeah. Like, did it freak you out to suddenly have that? Um, yeah. Like I was in shock because it just, like I said, I, I I hadn't tried. I wasn't trying. I had no idea where to start, if I was going to start. And I, you know, all of a, and then, bam, like, there, <laughs> suddenly I had names. And it, it, you know, it was very shocking in a good way, but it was shocking. But my, um, I, I was able to find my birth mother's brother. And so I called him and um, I was saying earlier, she put her full name, but she went forever by her middle name. So when I called, I asked for her by her first name, and he was kind of like, that's weird. Like, people don't call her that. So he was like, well, who's asking? And I said, well, I'm pretty sure that I'm her daughter. And there is this long pause, and then he goes, well, I guess that makes me your uncle. <laughs> and I was like, that is how that works, yeah. <laughs> and so uh, he, you know, he put me in touch with her, but then I had a friend at the time who worked um, 
in a field where he could do a little research and things that I couldn't. And um, I was still working at that bookstore. And he called and he's like, I'm pretty sure I found your birth father. And I was like, yeah. And he's like, are you sure you want to know? And <laughs> I said, yeah, now I'm not sure. I was sure. <laughs> um, so he said, well, I need to tell you, you know, let's, I'll come by. So he came by the bookstore and that's when he told me, you know, he, he was in the system and he had this mugshot, the mugshot photo. And, um, I, it's just, it was very, <laughs> it was just funny because it's his mugshot photo. So he's not happy because really who's happy in a mugshot photo. <laughs> so he's kind of scowling. And I, so he shows me this photo and I was like, hold on. And so I went and got my driver's license photo because who's ever smiling in their driver's license photo, right? <laughs> and we put them side by side and it was like, oh, yeah, man. yeah, you know, but it's obviously, um, you know, that was something to kind of deal with and I haven't really tried looking for him because yeah. even if I would want to meet him, I don't want to know where he is as long as there's law enforcement looking for him. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want that kind of responsibility. But um, I was saying earlier, fortunately, you know, through DNA testing, I've met enough of his family that I've been able to piece together quite a lot of the family tree. And so, you know, it's, I, I'm comfortable with the relationships that I have, you know, mm -hmm. I, I'm okay with it. It's, it's just different for everybody. And I'm sure, you know, a lot of those contestants on the show have really great relationships that go on afterwards. I was really curious to know, like, if if they had continued. Yeah, I, I know that Pamela, I, I know that she has because she puts things on her Facebook page and in the and then the relative race they, they, um, pages on Facebook. She goes to visit them a lot. And so she has built relationships with them. So that's really nice to know. I love when they do that because I think they know the fans yeah. want to know without, you know, getting too much up in their business, you know, yeah. um, but, but, but to let us know that, yeah, they, they do on, in some instances they, they are, you know, and I think for some of them, they're still kind of works in progress and it yeah. takes, it takes a while and, you know, um, I think it's wonderful though when they they do get to meet and they'll say we've been looking for you for years yeah. and we just didn't know you know we just didn't know where to where else to go um you know we've we've got uh, a team well alex on team red had younger sisters uh, one older sister and a younger sister that said we knew about you i the older sister said i held you there's a picture i held you when you were a baby yeah. you know and i've often i've wondered what happened to you and i've tried to find you and so those kind of things that you can just you can just see the healing yeah. going on just the, the healing the knowing um and i was interested and you you were saying that you you know saw that that photo and we see that happen a lot you know people will show them photos um mm -hmm. i was that how did you react to that photo were you more like oh my gosh i've never well, seen a picture of my dad before my biological yeah. dad yeah, yeah it was like me <laughs> And it, you know, it was a mixed thing because it's, you know, his mugshot and yeah, well, yeah, he, but he wasn't there, you know, he wasn't there for good things, but at the same right. time, it was like, that's my face. Yeah. You know, it's like, and it's interesting. Like the thing is, you know, in AJ's session earlier, one of the points he made was you kind of have to keep an open mind. Yes. And it yes. was interesting because one of the people I met through the DNA testing was his younger sister my aunt oh. and she just told me these stories like there were like 10 kids in that family and my biological grandfather had four separate families that didn't wow. know about each other until uh -huh. we started piecing it together. when I started piecing yes. it together it was like wow so four yeah. different families yep. so he was gone like he left after they were still kids my uh -huh. you know, my biological father was like 16 at the time their mom had her own set of issues, and so she was gone. And so my aunt would tell me all these stories about how my biological father, like, went above and beyond trying to keep all of those kids together and, like, oh. taking care of them. And how when their other brother was in this car accident, like, my biological father showed up out of nowhere and just took care of him until he could do it on his own. And so, you know, it's like my introduction to him is this mugshot photo. With yeah. Ryan, right? <laughs> But when you hear these other stories, yeah, and I paint think a completely different picture right. of him. Yeah, you know, it's like I so I just try to keep an open mind. And yeah, that's and that's similar to what um, Jamie from Team Red. We've got two Jamies this season. 
<laughs> like a Jamie on a Jamie on team black and a Jamie on team red. And that's what he's discovering, you yeah. know, that his, you know, uh, he, he's getting stories about his grandmother and his mother that he didn't know. And, yeah. and, let's, and let's be fair when you, because I've taken in foster kids, I've, I've adopted kids. You don't get the whole story. They don't tell you the whole story. You get the side that social services wants you to hear. So you'll yeah. keep these kids, you know? And so you can only tell them so much. This is all you know. And so there's a, they, they have a lot of missing pieces, yeah. a lot of missing pieces. And so it's been good for him to, and he also made the comment, um, which is why I think the show is so good too, is because the way they planned it out, he said, if, if I'd have met my biological mother first, I wouldn't have been prepared for it. We heard the other stories. Because, because he had this, the things that he knew from when he was a child, the things that he had heard, he, he wouldn't have been emotionally prepared. But because he got to meet um, siblings, half siblings that he didn't know, well, he kind of had rumored about, got to meet them and, and hear that his biological mother had gotten her act together, had cleaned up and 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 raised another family and did a good job with it he, yeah. he that that paradigm kind of shift shifted you know as far as thinking about his mother and his grandmother and he said i i would not have been prepared it would not have felt the same if they had just said day one here here's your yeah he said it would not have been the same experience would not have been the same experience so i i like that they Somebody asked me once if they do counseling. I don't think they do any counseling. I, I, I think we've asked that question once before and, and they don't specifically give them any counseling, but I think they're very careful in the stories and how it's presented. And they're very careful with the, the filming too. If they need to take a break and say, don't film this, they will pull back. They will pull back and wait till they're ready. And so they're very, um, responsible in the way they they put the show together you know doesn't mean they don't have to say okay we need to do that one again <laughs> you know we kind of because <laughs> yeah, the, the shot didn't uh, go that right but, yeah but as far as um you know planning out who they meet where and when i think they're very careful about that very careful they, they i imagine there has to be some sort of prep work some sort of emotional prep work because um a lot of adoptees or people who are searching for birth parents the thing that they don't stop to do is think about their expectations mm -hmm. and what they mm -hmm. want out of the search and right. you know what directions could this, they're not prepared yeah. at all mm -hmm. and so Oftentimes when I show up with the names of their birth parents the same day that I start, it freaks them out because yeah. they suddenly yeah. have the information and they don't know what to do with it. Yes. Yeah. So if I had one recommendation to make to anyone who's searching is do some prep work first of, you know, yeah. in your emotions, your mind, what is it you want out of the search? And it's okay to want whatever you want. There's no right or wrong answer. But knowing that ahead of time will help you once you have the answers to know what to do next. Yeah. Yeah. And well, also, you know, go, go, I'm sorry. I was going to just say, and also just to be, you know, if you're not prepared to have any kind of reaction, then don't take that step because you don't yeah. know what kind of reaction you're going to have. So you really have to be in the right place to just be able to yes. be ready to accept, you know. Exactly. And I was going to say, too, there are people who work on the show that actually had been part of the teams on the show. And so they've, they've come off of their seasons and are now working for Relative Race. And yeah. so they're making those phone calls They're You know, they can share and swap those stories about how it felt for them. And so I think that that in and of itself is helping to prepare them because they've got people that know what it's like. It's not just the producer saying, come on and do this. These are people that can really talk to them about their experiences and oh um, pam anderson smith good point she said i think you need to do that prep work even before you take a dna test you might yeah. find out things you never suspect because the information is going to come really fast the yeah. moment you start it's going to come surprisingly fast exactly yeah. i mean think about how many people that take a dna test just for fun and then they find and out suddenly it's like oh your dad is not who you thought yeah exactly, exactly. so you should never take a DNA test unless you're prepared to find out things that you didn't really want to know. 
<laughs> so, <laughs> well, it's, and it's true. Yeah, yeah. Well, because it's true. Because it, you don't know. You can't just say, "Oh, not in my family." That would have never happened in my family. You know, it might have. <laughs> I have seen it somewhere along the line. Yeah. In this work, I have seen it all, and I've I'm seen sure. it every. I mean, there's no type to the family right. Right. across the board. So exactly. Yeah. Exactly. You have to just go in with the imagination that anything's possible. Right. Yeah. Which season was it? Season six with JD and Jen. Um, yeah. And, and he found out that his, his, the dad that he grew up with was not his biological, dad. His biological dad. And it just blew. I mean, it was just blew his mind, you know, and so I think I, that was one of my favorite seasons be, because of JD. You know, we've all said we want JD to be our, <laughs> we want him to be we our son. all adopted. We just, you know, we want him to be the person we go to when we're having issues and problems because he was so, um, oh, just loving. And, and that whole season, those teams, the, all four teams were just so bonded. They're so bonded. They love to do things together still. They've even actually have contacted me and said, can we come on Gen Friends again as a team? So we, you know, a, a whole season so we can get together again. They're always looking for excuses to get together because they that's just so cool. love each other. And I think that very first might be the very first season that they all started wearing each the other's bands. bands because before, you know, black team wore the black bands, green team wore the green, you know, all those kind of things. And, and all of a sudden we're, we're saying, look, they're, they're wearing each other's colors, yeah. you know? Well, so, it was, Jared yeah. made a comment earlier in the chat that, they're finding their biological family, but they also form their relative race family. Yes. You know, they, they bond with the other team members because they're all going through the same thing, you know, yes. in some way, and they can understand, you know, what, what it's like and, you know, what they're feeling and what they're going through. And yeah. Um, yeah. It's like Wiki Tree. Wiki yeah. Tree. We all, you know, it's the same. It's like when you're looking for family, you make family, you know? Yes. I have yes. so many family members I've acquired since coming. <laughs> yeah, for uh, sure. I mean, and I didn't know that I was related to Abby until I met her on WikiTree. And oh, yeah. Like, you guys <laughs> We're like fourth cousins. Fourth and cousins, I'm like, right? that's such a close relationship. <laughs> with all the that was very cool. I love oh, it. Too funny. Too funny. Well, anybody so, out there that's watching, I'm just curious. Do you have a, do you have a favorite challenge? Are, are you relative race fans? So... Is there a challenge that you would, you know, that you really think is the best? Or do you think there's a challenge that they should probably never do again? <laughs> um, that one, I just watched it where they they had to answer trivia questions. And if they got it right, they could eat something delicious like pudding. And if they got it wrong, they had to eat like lard and like yes. salted and plums. And they had to try three times on this question. So if they got it wrong three times, they had to eat gross stuff like pudding. Yeah. Yeah. No, thank you. <laughs> no, thank you. Right. What I think is fun about those challenges is if you live in Utah and you pay attention every once in a while, they will post. They're looking for people to come and try out the games for the next season. So go. They got to make sure they work. <laughs> they got to make sure they work and they don't kill anybody. You know, <laughs> so what do the challenges even have to do with finding family? It's, it's part of the race. It's just part of the race. It's just part of the fun. And, and it's just part of, um, it, it kind of gives them, I think, just a, a way to just kind of relax during the day. You know, you get out of the car, you go and do these fun challenges. It's just all part of, cause it is a race. It's not just, you know, finding family and they have to get through the challenges in a certain amount of time. They can forfeit a challenge. We had, we had a team this, this season have to forfeit because somebody got hurt. And so they just had to sit it out and they got a time uh, delay. Um, and are you liking the photo challenge this time? I think the photo challenge is really cool. Someone said they didn't like it. They Somebody don't like it. That, yeah. Yeah. I, I like it better than them stopping to do the city selfies. Yeah. This, now, the selfies, the first couple of seasons were really funny because nobody could figure out how to use a flip phone. That's and true. So they were they really funny. Old, they have these old flip phones from like yeah. the 90s. The yeah, they can't have, have any GPS or anything on them. Yeah. Like text messaging yeah. and an old camera. Yeah, an old camera. And so they'd have to do that selfie to prove that they got into their city and they couldn't do it. But see, the teams got smart and they started practicing, you know. Yeah. They, they practicing how to use it. I mean, Deshae, 
um, season six, a green team that won, she had a whole book that she put together how to, how to do, you know, that she'd learned from the previous season. So, um, you know, if you're going to go on relative race, you have to learn how to take a selfie with your yeah. phone. You have to learn how to text quickly on your yeah. cell phone. You need to learn how to read a map. I can't believe how many people will come on. They know they don't have GPS. Learn how to read the map. Okay, my favorite one. It was it was these boys. They if they're twenty, bless their bless their hearts. And they lived in California, so they didn't they didn't drive. Like they That's they right. were they they were. I don't want to say sheltered. Maybe a little naive to the ways of the world. <laughs> but their first uh, their first place to go, and it was really funny because. The very first, Dan explains the challenge. Then they say they couldn't drive. Neither one of them had driver's licenses. And it's a race where you're driving across the country. <laughs> and so they're like, well, we got you a driver. And the driver oh. turned out to be the dad of one of yes. them, which was a really <laughs> cool moment. But yes. so they get in the car and they're ready to go. And they're they're trying to find Little Rock. And the one, the one guy was like, I can't find Arkansas. I see our Kansas. Our Kansas is here. There's a little rock our Kansas, but where's Arkansas? Is that the they same thing? They showed that clip. And the other guy's like, no, it's not the same. And you can just see the, the dad's not allowed to help. And you can just see the dad's like. <laughs> and I think he even got out of the car for a minute because he was. He like, did. He was so frustrated. <laughs> oh, that's so funny. I remember that. So they, they, they have some great moments. They have some really great moments. Yeah. Um. Then there's Joe and Jerrica, and Joe decides the car's dirty, and so they're timed, and he decides he's going to go wash yeah, the car. The they go through the car wash, and we're all screaming at the TV going, what are you thinking? <laughs> you're being timed, and you're going through the car wash. <laughs> so <laughs> great. And that's, they also almost got run off the road. They were coming from Columbia. Oh, they yeah. were actually in South Carolina, and I was dying because we're in South Carolina. They've had three or four teams go through South Carolina, I'm going, Hello, and y'all didn't tell me you were filming. And my Jen, right. crew, my Jen friends crew say they know better than to tell you. Uh, <laughs> tell me, because you'd show up and be crazy. But yeah, they got run off the road. So crazy. Yeah. The episode with um, it was Kyle and oh, Layton. Layton. Yeah. So she she met her biological father. He lives a mile from me. <laughs> oh, yeah. I was like, like they're in Albuquerque. They drive into his house, and I'm like, yeah. I drive past where he lives every yeah. day. <laughs> I kept trying to tell him. Of course, you know this has already been filmed, but I'm yelling, Kyle. The volcanoes are to the west. <laughs> the <mountains laughs> east. Pay attention to where you are. <laughs> so so. Um. So um, you don't you don't have to answer this because I'm gonna I'm gonna pry into your okay. life for a sec, but okay. I'm just curious if any of, if your adopted kids have any interest in um, knowing, are they um, old enough to um, do that? Some of them, one of them has recently taken a DNA test, but he's in his early thirties. Uh, yeah. And so he just took a DNA test and he keeps saying, mom, it's not because I don't love you. I'm like, I know. I understand. <laughs> I understand. I understand. Um, I've got a couple more that um, mm, they, they one wanted just to do it for ethnicity. And yes. once he saw that, he he was OK. But now he's starting to wonder, do I want to make matches? My um, my children that I have adopted through foster care. Um, I don't know if it's a good thing for them to meet. Them. Right. Yeah. It's a scary thing. They just don't pull kids out of foster care families for no reason. For no reason. And these were big big, bad, scary reasons. And so they have to, you have to be careful because yes, they want to know, um, but do they want to go all the way to meet? Because then that brings that into our family and they've got exactly. brothers yeah. and sisters with little kids. And you know what I'm saying? Once you open that door, you've opened that door. Yeah. And so, and I'm not trying to say that it's a, it's a delicate situation. This is not, you know, a story of my my biological parents were like you know 16, 16. Yeah. that kind of story these are these are these are situations where there was a lot of abuse and so and and a lot of uh, all sorts of abuse from different different aspects yeah. and so they're you know taking trying to be real careful but just trying to get get some of the information one of one of my kids that decided he wanted to do just the dna test um He's like literally a man of the world. I mean, he doesn't have like half of anything. <laughs> he's just got 
the little, it's the strangest DNA I've ever seen. He's got little parts from all over the world, you know? So yeah, there, that was me. I have, yeah? the, I have the rainbow of colors, <laughs> so <does laughs> which he. was really cool to find out, actually. It was Especially like, if you have Puerto Rican. There's yeah. a lot going on in Puerto Rican. Yeah, yeah I, think, uh, I think that's the line that goes, you know, I've got more African than I thought. I would yeah and like yeah. so many you know a lot of those i think come if i could trace beyond puerto rico that, that's where i would find yeah. But, yeah yeah you brought up a good point jerry and that is it's okay for people not to reach out like once yeah. they mm -hmm. get the family tree kind of figured out yeah you know, there's no reason why they have to reach out to anybody right. if all they want to do is be able to build their family tree so that they have yeah. something to pass down to their kids that's okay exactly yeah it's it's, it's, it's an individual thing it's an individual thing you know yeah, yeah. And that's sometimes the thing. it's not good it's just not good and i've i've talked to them you know wait till you're just a little bit older where you can really handle some of them are still like, I mean, I've got a, a teenager and then I've got um, some in their early 20s. Yeah. You get a little bit more stability and some maturity to handle because you're going to find they, they know their stories, but there's yeah. probably stuff in there that we don't even know. And I just like, here. let's let's be a little bit, you know, let's be able to handle what we might be a little grounded. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And, and I told them I'll help them in any way you know, help them make those matches and build those trees and, and things like that. So they know. That they're lucky they have you to already on hand to be able to help them with help that. Work. Well, let me tell you something. I have a feeling that if it wasn't for the show that I'm addicted to and seeing their stories and seeing the how much it means to them, I don't know that I feel the same way. Do you know what I mean? I might be Oh my gosh, I don't want my child going. <laughs> You're my child. You know what I'm saying? That kind of thing. And so I think honestly, to be fair, I think seeing their stories and seeing those connections and seeing how it has helped um, with the closure, it's helped with um, just feeling better about themselves. And because, you know, you can love your child as much as you love your child. I don't love my adopted kids any more than I you know, I, my biological kids any more than I love my adopted children. Although I did have somebody ask me, ask one of my children once, my all of my children were sitting there and they looked at one that they knew was biological and they said, which ones are your real children, were your real siblings? Oh, ouch. All of and them? So, you know what we said? They all look real to me. <laughs> <laughs> and that's I keep, my, my, I keep imaginary siblings in the other room. <laughs> <laughs> People just don't, they, they, they want to draw that line between they do. Okay, these are the real children and yeah. these are the adopted children. And yeah. um, I remember once, if anybody, because um, I lived in Utah, um, Marie Osmond once said, because she's got the same kind of thing going on in her family. And she said, I don't even remember. A reporter asked her that and she goes, I don't even remember. <laughs> so... <laughs> You know, on national television, they ask her, which ones are your, you know, and she goes, so crazy. I don't even, I don't even remember. So, but families come in all different, all different shapes and sizes. And we're put together in different shapes and sizes for different reasons. And, uh, you know, there's nothing wrong with going and looking, especially if you've got that, that desire. desire. Some people never have that desire and there's nothing wrong with that either. Yeah. So it's, it's specifically up to up I think to I think that's the gist of all of what we've been talking about really is that it's it's a very personal thing for yes. everyone involved and that the best things you can do are you know know what you want and what's best for you and like yes. hear the stories of other people but those don't have to be your stories and they no. may not be your stories and that's, that's okay. okay and you know what you're looking for and how far you want to go Mm -hmm. And just be respectful, you know, be thoughtful, think about everyone who may be affected and just. Yes, that's a good point. Be, be uh, mindful of people who would be affected. I've got someone that I know. Um, <laughs> she's discovered that she has a biological half sister that she never knew about. Well, they found uh, this she was looking for her mother and found that these two had the same father it was before um her parents had married so she wasn't too upset about it so she started trying to help her find her biological mother 
they found her. This woman is in her 80s, but she's never told her husband that she had a child. And so at this point, she says, I can't, I, I, I can't, I can't yeah. meet you. We can have a few phone conversations and I can tell you some information that would help you. <clears throat> but I can't, I can't do this to my husband and my other children. And, and she's got to respect that. You can't just go barging, but it's my right. Yes, I know everybody should have the right to know where they came from, but we've got to be careful with other people's feelings. I mean, how many, how many people, you know, gave children up for adoption with that sign, you know, saying oh, yeah. they will never be able to find you. So they never told anybody. Yeah. And now they're for, finding you. Well, and yeah. for, <laughs> now they're finding you. We knew about DNA, you know, and so ooh, I'm flashing. Um, and then, uh, you know, it, it, it's a different, it's a generational thing too, yeah. because women, women, you know, that are out there in their eighties, that this happened to for them, it's still, an embarrassment and you know those well and probably like a really carefully guarded feeling that they've kept in here you know for yes. Decades. yes yes so. absolutely so we do have to be so so careful yeah. and on top of that people need to also consider their own feelings yeah. yes. it's time to stop and think how am i feeling right now as i'm searching mm -hmm. for my family and take care of themselves yes emotionally while yes during the search because it, it it can be heavy emotionally mm -hmm. and it's yeah. okay to stop yes. work and take time for yourself and then mm -hmm. come back and come back to it for sure well oh. i'm so sorry i'm so sorry everybody that was watching that was okay we, we, had anyway. <laughs> we had a great conversation <laughs> we so. did have to change links and maybe that yeah off or something so um Hopefully. i apologize so sorry, sorry to them if that's the case yeah it happens but this was fun i enjoyed yeah. talking to you i enjoyed it a lot it was very fun i'm glad emma was here so if yes. you're interested in being one of our adoption animals on wiki tree she told you what to do um and yeah i think thank you both for for being here it was great just getting to chat and talk about stuff so, I appreciate I appreciate you inviting me on. Thank you. Yeah, it's been fun. All right. We will go for now. Bye, everybody. <laughs>